folks. This is not going to be like a normal segment. I'm not even sure what I'm going to say. I actually went back and forth on what the content of this discussion would be. Trigger warning for death and a bunch of other stuff I just don't remember off the top of my head. But I want you to know that uh, there's a purpose to this. So I found out last night from a dear friend that my Zen master, Jumpo Kondo Delis Kelly, passed away. Junpo was a bit of a troublemaker. The short version of this, and I'll give kind of a timeline, is that I started practicing Zen around 2007. I had been practicing with a dear set of friends of mine, including one person I meant, uh, mentioned in my other video. We had started getting into Zen, started practicing meditation, researching koans, just trying to understand them. A koan, by the way, is sort of a riddle made to wake you up. Around 2008, um, I'd come across a video by an artist I really liked. His name was Stuart Davis. He's got really good music, um, and his um, he had a show called Sex, God, and Rock and Roll. On it, he had a lot of cool segments, a lot of cool news discussions. It was a really fun show. However, there was a, an interview he had, because the interviews for some reason were all on separate parts of the DVD. He had this wild guy, older gentleman, probably in his late 60s, who the conversation started with talking not about Zen or spirituality, but psychedelics. See, Junpo was the head in the 70s, I believe it was, of a uh, group of individuals who liked doing exploratory stuff with um, entheogens. He... Uh, he was a big fan at the time of LSD. Um, his statement being, if you took it in the right setting, in the right context, you could go non-dual, which is a specific dis definition of awakening. I'm not going to go into all that here. And it's through that, as well as own personal growth, that eventually led him to a uh, choice point. He either could continue his spiritual training and actually find a teacher and stop wandering around the world like an idiot, which would eventually lead him to commit suicide, or he could go choose a teacher and go train formally. He chose the latter. Now, Junpo's teacher is a guy who was very um, controversial, let's say. His, na his name was Edo Shimano Roshi. He ran Zen Studies in New York, and there's a lot of conflicting information as to what happened under his tenure but the positive version, or at least the, the best understanding of the framing is, is that he slept with a lot of students. So Junpo worked with him for quite some time, went through formal koan study, which is you study up to 108 koans. A koan is resolved usually by sitting in the sendo, meditating on it, and then when you hear the bell down the hall, you rush your ass down, you sit in front of the master, and you present the koan. If you fail, you're rushed out and you get to go back to the zendo. Junpo had completed 108 of these, which is pretty damn impressive, and he was actually offered the, the monastery, but he decided to leave because there was an ethical dilemma. That is the, the stuff that Ada was doing. So when I saw this guy, I was immediately enamored. I thought he was brilliant. He was somebody who had done psychedelic work, like myself. He was somebody who was deep into Zen, like myself. Um, I had flirted with the idea of working with other teachers in the past, but he, he was the one that called me. So I initially reached out, and then I pussied out. The guy I talked to on the phone, whose name is Doshin, he's one of the Roshis of the, the order now, um, was a little too intense. So uh, I ended up going back um, around a year later when someone on Facebook had informed me that there was a three-day retreat south of us into another state. We drove there in, like, insane people very, very fast, and uh, we got to sit with him for three days. It was nice. It was great. Hard. Real hard. 
I liked it so much that a month later I did a seven-day retreat. Funny story is that uh, upon the ending of that retreat, I came home and found out that my partner at the time had uh, attempted to cheat on me and was breaking up with me. 2010 was a hell of a year for me. <laughs> and they're fine now. I, I love my ex. I think they're a wonderful human being. Um, we just had a lot of stuff that we needed to work through and we weren't doing great at it. Um, it is cringe, but the thing is, I'm also not of the opinion that it's an, it's the end of the world. Um, there's reasons why people cheat. Um, the short version is, is that, um, often the reason, reasons why people cheat is to stay in the relationship. You know, if they just wanted to be with someone else, they would be. And thankfully my partner at the time, you know, made the call that they needed to be in a poly relationship and they wanted out. Neither of us handled it well. Um, but it was fine. So after that seven day retreat, I went back the next year with my um, partner at the time and I took lay vows, which is reading the the rules or the, the um, precepts of the order and taking formal vows. Junpo had said to me during that that you know, I don't do this like other teachers. You know, this isn't the spiritual cow where you get to be led around by the teat. You know, you go out into the world, you do things, you act, and if you come back and you did something dumb, you know, we slap you one and then we you, you move back on. There's no shame here. In a lot of ways, a lot of my views are informed by Junpo and his creation of Mondo Zen. Mondo Zen is a... Uh, School of Thought in Zen, which is a hybridizing of psychology and Zen. There's a lot of clinicians in the order, a number of psychologists, etc., and a lot of people who are very well studied in Buddhism, far more than I am. And what they did is they deconstructed the koan process and took it down from 108 to around, I think it's like it's 16 now. And the purpose of this was to point out insight in English in understandable ways rather than giving you old riddles that are usually translated and often use cultural signifiers that are hard to understand if you're not from the culture that created it. It's a pretty brilliant process. It can wake people up. I've been through it and I've uh, I've demonstrated it. Excuse me, multiple times. Junpo was always hard on me, but I would never say he was abusive. I would never say he was anything. I have negative critiques about our Zen order and some of the things that have happened or some of the people in it, and I will talk about that at a future place. But right now, I just want to talk about him. In a lot of ways... Junpo is one of the few manifestations of the masculine person that really worked for me. Now, it's arguable to say that sitting in temples enough and doing shit long enough that eventually seeing that probably is one of the reasons why I came out. Because I realized that I wasn't that. <laughs> so, here's what happened. Around... 2012, 2013-ish, I want to say, I started pursuing the idea of becoming a priest. I was already doing some sort of life coaching and supporting people in a practice. Correct, Thanagor. Hollow Bone Zen. And I ended up working with another priest, um, who I will remain nameless at this time, who helped me and made and pushed me to kind of grow and to be better. And there was a dialogue with this mentor um, and Junpo that uh, Junpo was saying, why now? Why not next year? Why not the year after that? Why does it have to be now? And I said in tears that because I wanted it to be him. Because if I was going to take formal vows as a priest, go through the ritual of walking in in the white robe and then leaving, coming back in with the full robes. It's actually a beautiful ceremony. The reality is, is that I wanted it to be him.
Knowing Junpo, he was not the uh, the huggy feeling type, and so what he said was, "Summer Daibosatsu, be there." And that's what happened. I had made my case, and there wasn't any fanfare or anything. It was just him saying, "Cool," <laughs> and I took vows. I ran a sango for a while, made some mistakes, and uh, lost friends over it because there was a lot of different things going on in me and a lot of things going on in them. Sangha is a Buddhist community, for those who don't know. This man always treated me fairly. He taught me a great deal. If you want to know more about him, he actually does have some books out. For sayings and some of his wisdoms, there's a book out called the Junpo Roku. I believe you can buy that on Amazon. I think all of them are on Amazon now that I think about it. Um, there's a book called The Heart of Zen, which is a really great intro to the idea of a modern Zen ideal. And um, there is Heart Blown Open, which is a book about Junpo's life and history. Everything from his abusive father as a child and his first memory of touching into Zen awareness while laying under his bed, being afraid of his father who was yelling and acting abusive, and having the son burst into Zen awareness while peeing under the bed, hiding from his father. There's a lot of really intense stuff in there. Junpo going to India, working as a um, uh, devotee of Trunk Trunkpa Rinpoche, who is also a bit of a character. Junpo had a habit of choosing teachers who were uh, troublemakers. And while Junpo himself is a troublemaker, he never went to their levels, uh, never anything inappropriate or uh, bad. Um, At some point, I will cover some of the things and the conflicts within myself around Zen and hollow bones, but I don't think it's appropriate here. I just wanted an opportunity to share him with you to offer that if you want to know more about something that was incredibly influential in my life and still is that I would highly recommend looking up his videos and his work I think Integral Zen did a, a couple videos with him asking questions and they were pretty good not great quality but they're good and uh, the books are really good Heart of Zen Junpo Roku um yeah. Due to various factors in the pandemic, I hadn't seen him in several years. There were a number of sessions, sessions, excuse me, S-E-S-S-H-I-N. But there were always factors that prevented it. For a while, they were work and trying to figure out a way for my partner to be able to go. Xena has a difficulty with incense, and I wanted them to go and meet him. Which sadly will never happen. <sighs> then in 2019, I was planning on going in, I wanted to say it was January, I don't know, it was somewhere around there, but basically, long story short, was I had, uh, I had been a person living in denial of myself for many, many years. 20, as a matter of fact, and I came out to one of the people first was him. <laughs> you know what the old buzzard said to me? You're too old. <laughs> and to some, they may see that as cruel or transphobic, but I didn't. <laughs> I went, holy shit. Within one statement, the motherfucker treated me more like a woman. <laughs> I'm getting shit for being old. <laughs> There's a fucking joke to that. It's lovely. One second.
I'm just trying to see if I could find any more pictures, but I think they're all saved and zipped right now. Yeah. I'll have to... Wait, no, I think I might have something. Hold on. Pictures. Let's go to... Where the shit is my pictures? Updated images. No. Phone backups. So... So here's some fun stuff. I think I have a few videos, a few things to check out. Check this out. So right here, this is Daibosatsu. This is a literal Zen temple, tatami mats, cushions. At the end, there's a slightly open door with the Buddha. You probably can't see it because of the chat in the way. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, some people sat in chairs, some people at cushions. You would sit here for about a half an hour at a time, get up, do walking meditation. There's a hallway a hallway that leads right back here and you'd walk around this area. It was actually quite brilliant. And it was on nice days, you'd actually then go outside and walk on the patio outside here. Um, let's see. I might have a couple other cool ones. So, that Buddha statue I mentioned, this is what's inside there. Check that motherfucker out. Imagine being in a temple where everything needs to be done right. Tea put in offerings. Specific Japanese prayers read every day as you're putting out the candles and cleaning up the incense dust, closing the, uh, the rice paper screens on the windows. I look for one more. Let's see if any of these actually have some fucking people in them, Jesus Christ. So I won't show pictures from it, but I will say this. Um, one of the things that was really interesting about going to a hollow bones retreat is you were told it was going to be like a seven day affair. It's sacred style, sacred silence. You're not, you're not talking to people, but what happened is at the end, what we didn't tell new people was, is that we'd break silence and there would be a fucking party. You know who can fucking party? People that have been shut up for seven days. Fuck me. This is what Daibosatsu looks like on the outside this fucking thing out. This place is great. This is in upstate New York. They have to worry about bears and shit. You'd go through these doors and there would be um, a little shoe room over here and then you'd go down the hall, which were all wood, all lacquered. And they were, uh, they were, there were two to a room, you know, they were little bunk beds for people that were coming there to train at the monastery. Um, what was fascinating is, is that if you go upstairs here, there's a hallway that leads back into the temple and then way, way in the back here, there's the, the Zendo, the place where you meditate. Over here was the uh, gift shop because they need to pay for shit somehow. And then there's the little cafeteria area. Upstairs, hidden away, are some study areas and stuff like that. And there are some really wonderful, um, people that live here, the on-site staff who cook, clean, and take care of this place. This place is run by a lady by the name of Shinge Roshi. She's also a student of Jumpa, or uh, of uh, Edo Shimano. Very lovely kind of lady. She's just the coolest. But, uh, yeah. So, I'll see if I can't find any more pictures of Jumpo, but uh, there's definitely some of them floating around. Many of them, me being boy and youngin, but, you know, what it is. Personally, I'm not very spiritual, but I respect people who are. Zen's pretty good for that. If you don't want to be spiritual, Zen's pretty good for that. A lot of the rituals there is a teaching tool to be mindful, to be aware of your every moment, to be aware of your breath. Um, there are definitely schools of Zen that take on a much more religious aspect, but traditional um, Zen is is usually 
neither spiritual nor non-spiritual. It has the, uh, the, the trappings of such, but it is very much a um, in-the-moment kind of thing. I might have to do a discussion sometimes about, uh, about Mondo Zen and some of the things they believe because I still think a lot of them are true. My ideas about violent anger, shame, all these things are um, – our reactions to emotion. I didn't learn that from psychology. Psychology just verified it. I learned that through, uh, I learned that through Junpo Roshi. So if you can, you can go find that sex God and rock and roll, uh, interview with him and Stuart Davis. Stuart Davis is lovely. Another punk monk, um, as we used to call him. But, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I wanted to share this. Um, got one more, I think actually. Trying to see if there's any good ones that will uh are really good or really pop. Let me look at these pictures. <laughs> Here's a fun one. Jumpo with his family. Him and his wife getting married. They used to tango all the fucking time. That's Diane. D-A-I-E-N. -E -E uh, one of the Roshis under Junpo. This is them getting married. Him and his wife, Bakara. Lovely couple. Him and Doshin in robes. Doing a little bit of a headbutt. Him finding mushrooms because the motherfucker couldn't have enough mushrooms. Zen can be really powerful. Change a lot of people. If done right and without abuse, hierarchy can be useful if done for a teaching point, but it must never be abused. Zen taught me a lot. It informs this channel. So, yeah. I hope... I hope this was meaningful for people. It was for me. Grief is nothing to be ashamed of. Loss will come for us all. There is no escape. As Jumbo would put it, we live on a mother who will in the end consume us. So yeah. I appreciate everyone watching. It feels like I would cheapen it to go through the normal YouTube stuff, but you know how to do all that stuff below anyway. Donations help. Links are below. And with that, I will say, again, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.